remembered face rig and that was my savior basically <laughs> afterwards i appeared and uh, i know it was, <laughs> it was very there funny is, there's no such thing as a bad hair day and face rig <laughs> that is true <laughs> marketing slogan I've started the recording. <laughs> I, I presume everyone is warned now. Okay, yeah. how did you do that? <laughs> how did I do what? Oh, no, me. Did not Graham me. do that? Ah. <laughs> Graham is going really like right. the Cheshire cat. <laughs> really uh, oh, this is my other secret. <laughs> it's just that one side of your room is still shining through. The other, <laughs> that, that yeah. you have to move the webcam over. Yeah, because yeah, that side yeah. bar is showing. <laughs> Let's see. Spotlight. As soon as as soon as I can grab things, okay. It's a green screen. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Did you get that from um, that trick from Sue? Or it's well known. <laughs> I don't understand the thing about green. Why does it have to be green? It doesn't, but I think it's kind of a convention, isn't it? They've chosen that, but it could be other. It could have been it other colours. Be there are blue screens as well. But this colour green isn't something that people normally wear. Exactly. I don't have anything that colour. Irish, but you have uh, one. Yes. Okay. I no, have. But... I've got a T-shirt. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's a dark green. <laughs> it doesn't count. I think we might have to, I don't know, make them start a new group where no one comes as themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Webheads uh, anonymous, you mean? Kind of uh, like a oh, Halloween it's costume cool. party. It's been done, yeah. But I tell you, a very, very funny webcam I saw today at the... Uh, um, at the job call conference, it made me laugh. It honestly it was such a blast. Uh, it's uh, you know I have been collecting funny webcams ever since <laughs> <laughs> in my professional life, and I have to show you this one. If if I may, uh, Vance, if you could give me hosting. Uh, yeah, hang on, I'm just, getting, right. I'm just getting the web the uh, live stream going. I had to provide information. I had forgotten. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> uh, doucement, doucement. Let's see. Okay. It's, um, I think the web page should be starting. Moment. I'm just uh, checking that it hopefully is. Give me a second here. Okay. Oh, hello. Sorry. My phone. Okay. Uh, we're definitely live. Okay. So. Uh, over to, let's see, Heike, what, what are you asking me? Oh, Vance, you have to um, give the date and all that stuff and what number. Well, thank, you. Yeah, thank you, Nina. Nina, do you know the date today? What's the date today? Uh, well, where I am, it's June 7th. What is it where you are? January 7th, 2020. You never know. January. We could have some Rip Van Winkle people here. You never know. Yeah. Oh, j j June, June seventh. June seventh. I was going to say, is is there a six month time delay? <laughs> you can well, COVID break Facebook, everything. That Facebook thing. It's coming in from January. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. So this is Webheads in Action. Um, what do we call these things? The weekly revival, revival, revival meeting, regular weekly Sunday revival meeting. Hallelujah. Uh, number eleven. Our eleventh. Uh, and Talon, this is the 25th Talon webinar. Whoa, that's going strong. And the 471st Learning Together episode. Oh, wow. Welcome, everybody. And we're, we are recording on my computer and also on Facebook. So, and the gang's yeah. all here. The gap between this and Facebook is fairly uh, long. I'd say it's 10, 20 seconds. About 10, probably 10 seconds. Oh, I like that, Graham. Graham has disappeared. Oh, okay. 
Okay. That's it. Let me see. The perfect, let's put light the perfect let's put light mask. Spotlight. How do I get a spotlight on Graham? I forget. Kind of. Can I show you that funny webcam which I saw today at the Jolt Call conference? Sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, okay. that is. Hang on. I like it. Okay. And I noticed that Michael's hit, back of his head keeps disappearing in his green screen, but Graham. It's where the whole thing disappears is. completely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Graham, Graham, you should have been a stand up comedian like uh, Gavin Dudney. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Boy, so you don't need those crazy little uh, creatures like Heike has. Okay, Heike. <laughs> what, we're, we're over yeah, to you. Just, I just I wanted to mention that webcam that I saw. Um, at Jald Call, uh, mm -hmm. if I may. Okay, and you, you uh, spotlight your screen? No, she she share your screen. Share my screen. Share your screen. Because it's, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just you, an image. You need my permission to share. Is that correct? Yes, please. Okay, let me just. Ooh, oh, no. What have I done? Oh, uh, exit full screen. Oh, okay, somebody's waiting. Let me let people in. Chris Fry is waiting. Oh, Good one. Graham has a whole bunch of these things. <laughs> Did you draw them yourself, Graham? One for every occasion. Yes, you can keep <laughs> switching them off. You know, Graham, what I do is I uh, I keep them on a lanyard. So what you can do is you can you can keep them. You can keep putting new ones on. Yeah, cool. You learn you learn so much in webheads, you know. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. I'm overly multitasking here. I've got to. Uh, let Heike share her screen. So I need to go to security and allow participants to share a screen. So I think Heike, you should have it now. Mm -hmm. Let me know if anything, if there's anything else I can do for you, just let me know. <laughs> so let's see. This is the one I saw. Okay. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. What is that? Is that playing tennis or? Like a golf club. Oh, it's a background? No, it's not a background. That person is actually playing golf. Ah. And he has, he was observing the Jolt Call conference. So he ha must have had the iPad just sitting there because we uh -huh. saw him up every now and again, sort of muting, unmuting. Uh, and uh, whilst he was listening to Jolt Call, he was playing golf. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the ultimate real... multitasking. People get Honestly, a little weird during so... lockdown. You know? <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> All right. I thought it was lovely. It was a fantastic conference, by the way. It was really, really good. It was. It was very good. Uh, I, I only caught the second day, thanks to Heike's uh, notifying me, let me know that, that it was on. And no, which which sessions did you attend, then? Hi, Chris. I'll show you. Let's see. I'll do a screen share. And when I want to Facebook oh, Chrome, I guess. Hi, Chris. Chrome. There we go. There's um. If I go down to earlier events, let's see earlier events. Um, here we are. Is this what I did? No, that was before. Let's see. These are all the stuff we're tracking. This is the Jolt Call 2020 online conference. Wow. And uh, let's see what I, I I saw the first one. Well, I think it was the first one. Gary mm -hmm. and, uh, and this guy, Gary and Steve Henneberry. Yeah. They talked about, um, what did they talk about? Talked about, um, hmm. Let's see, it's up here. Online speech, yeah, online speech uh, recognition. And that was interesting to me because I used to work with speech recognition when I was doing Tracy Talk and working in California. So um, anyway, I, I hope these things will be recorded. And then I saw, um, what is this? Developing a language learning system uh, that, that appropriates the affordances of virtual reality. Uh, okay. This was um, James York's um, mm -hmm. master's student, mm -hmm. Koichi Shib Shibata. And he basically did a nice little. 
I wanted to attend that one. How was it, baby? It was about it was about motivation. Uh, I think I put in a text chat somewhere that it turns out that getting people to do challenging cognitive tasks is more motivating than multiple choice because, well, I mean, but that's basically what they establish it. People that that uh, the um, the task, the complexity of the task, and the fact that it was challenging was it was not an impediment in the for the students that they researched that was one of the findings mm -hmm. uh let's see what else uh, research in mall oh that was a really good one that was edo uh foresight um, mm -hmm. yeah it, it was, i started copying his screens because, because everything he put, everything up, was, he put up was he put up a uh, uh research annotated annotated research uh, of the things that he was studying and so, um, SMS and smartphones basically they they found that students prefer to use smartphones to computers at least for them so I think it's because stuff. a lot of them don't have computers yeah and and they're becoming so much more attuned to them to the smartphones and another one that I thought was kind of interesting, my son who's teaching in uh, Qatar asked me, he told me in, he uses Reddit or he, Reddit as a search tool. And uh, I don't use Reddit very much, I don't know if you do. Do you use Reddit, anybody? I, I don't. Hmm? I have not heard good things about Reddit. Yeah, well, he said one thing, it's not, uh, what is the, the acronym is, um, NSFW, not safe for work or not kid safe. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just took a few screenshots there and this was the group of people who attended and reported to James there at the end. And then the other one I listened to sort of in the inter interim was Robert Anthony talking about, uh, he was talking about a game that uh, has a puzzle. So the puzzle is that, uh, Graham would like this. Um, it's a you great game. To, yeah, you, you played it. You know it. You tell us about it. Yeah. Okay, tell us your impression. It's, um, it's, a, it's a game that you play with two more people. Mm -hmm. One person is looking at a screen um, that shows a bomb with lots of wires and various mm -hmm. things. And the other, per, the other player um, needs to have a, access to a manual of how to defuse the bomb. Mm -hmm. And they talk the person who diffuses the bomb through it. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I actually, uh -huh. I've got it on my computer at the moment. So I could show you. Nice one. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Let me, um, let me get it ready. Sure. It's let me un okay. I'll unshare my screen, but basically that's, uh, that's what I saw today. Uh, they're very interesting sessions. Well, I'm, I also attended Paul Rain's session, which blew me away, absolutely blew me away. He was talking about ELT.digital, his own site, which seems to have been a self-programmed um, site for with uh, English language teaching exercises and lesson plans already ready-made for teachers to be able to use it. A little bit like English 360, yeah, mm -hmm. or... Um, it's almost like the canvas filled with English teaching material so that teachers can just use the content in class. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Seem very, very HP, H5P program such as, and but it has a lot of tools in it such as spell checkers, grammar checkers, so that students can actually um, uh, upload and submit. Well, it's, it's a site for assignments really can sub, uh, submit assignments like essays um, that are appropriate towards the TOEIC uh, kind of framework essay with 300 words and the kind of vocabulary you have to use with a, a graph. And, and then the, uh, the essays can be automatically graded in the tool itself, as I said, using spell checker, using grammar checkers, and saving uh, the teachers a lot of time. Amazing. 
absolutely amazing. Uh, and he seems to have self-programmed that all. Paul, Paul Rain, he, he's one of the most techiest of, I don't think he is an English teacher. He's kind of an IT <laughs> guru <laughs> of, of some kind who's won a lot of awards for his uh, highly technical solutions. What is his name? Paul Rain. Paul Rain, okay. I'm going to, to, to check out the, the talk he gave. Uh -huh. Because I meant to go to um, James York's um, mm -hmm. Reddit, it sounded really interesting. But then I saw John Ray, mm -hmm. and I saw John in uh, two years in Nagoya. I was already deeply, deeply impressed by him. And this time again, he just mm -hmm. wow, beyond, beyond. I, I hope they post the videos. They they mentioned that they do. Uh, yeah, they, they they said they were going to ask uh, the presenters if it was okay to post the video they're going to give them a segment of their video and is this okay to post and um so i anyway that that implied that the videos would be forthcoming so that's really great um yeah so anybody else attended anything interesting and here's maru waiting to get in what are you, what, what, what are you been you what watching I not attend Hmm? I did not attend any demonstrations about police brutality, oh. but I really, really wanted to. Yeah. My husband said he would tie me down before he would let me out of the house. Hmm. But it's been really hard. And what I've noticed, I used to go to a lot of demonstrations, um, and it seemed like three quarters of the crowd was my age. But... The crowds that I saw out demonstrating for George Floyd were young. Mm -hmm. And they were all colors, very diverse crowds. But whether anything will actually happen is a very good question. I'm not holding my breath, but I'm hoping. Yeah, let's see if I can find this lady posted something. I'm just looking here. I can find this. Uh, what, what about Graham? What have you have you been to any interesting conferences lately, Graham? You know, um, not so much conferences, but actually, I've been um, I've been doing quite a bit with this Facebook group RPG mm -hmm. and ELT, which mm -hmm. I came across through participating in the virtual in the, the conference, the virtual roundtable at Hiker organized mm -hmm. so they're a group of educators who are looking at role-playing games rpg and how to adapt them to english language teaching and they they meet every week to play test one mm -hmm. um and we record the videos etc it's quite an interesting thing so mm -hmm. i've i've been running a couple of games um there on sort of interactive storytelling and escape rooms and stuff and attended some others as well how can we put the link in the how can we notify each other of these things that are going on would we, would we follow you somewhere or post something in one of our groups um about this one, one is um this one is a facebook group and they meet every wednesday at the, right, the same time it's like Mm -hmm. in the evening in in Italy in Russia which is where most of the educators are from could you can you post the link to the Facebook group in the chat and then I'll have a look and yeah it's in, included in the link it's in the chat cycle okay great it's in the chat um, and then last last week was quite an interesting one because um, we were playing a game a role-playing game called the quiet year mm -hmm. which is a map making game so it's a collaborative map making game hmm. that you um do you kind of create a co-create a story um and it's basically a year the the scenario is a year after what happens the year after a an apocalyptic event um it's quite difficult to kind of explain but um, it's quite interesting because you just co-create a story with a map and we use Jamboard to mm -hmm. have everybody sort of draw what was happening. Let me... Um, and it's, 
You, you posted a Jamboard uh, in your Facebook. Was that what, That's was, right. that's what you were doing? That's right. That was the result of the game. We, we only play for an hour. So what, you, what we actually do is um, we normally play for 30, 40 minutes and then discuss it. Hmm. What worked, what didn't work, etc. Cool. Okay. I could, yeah. Good fun. Well, I've, I've, um, I've experienced something similar once in a, a group of students. They did, it was like this map, a collaborative co-creation of a map was kind of a settlers game. Yeah. And uh, it was the, the whiteboard afterwards, they looked, it looked totally like messy, but it was a three hour thrilling uh, game that was always like, um, there was this population and they settled on the river and then they had the beach nearby and they were engaged in fishing. So they all sort of did their, their, their ecosystem or biotope uh, descriptions of what is there. And then uh, suddenly came the intruders, <laughs> which is like, uh, and so, and every time at one point, the teacher just asked a kind of an interactive uh, branching questions, you know, would you do, what would you cooperate with the intruders or would you, try to beat them, like have a war with them or something like that. And then they would decide, then they would continue with the game. It was so thoroughly engaging, it was unbelievable. And it was just a sim very simple whiteboard type of uh, oral, oral game, which was so great. And everybody got to talk. That was the amazing thing. Can you put more information in the text chat? Whatever goes in the text chat goes in the, in the blog post. Sorry, Graham. I, I have a screenshot of the uh, the final results of that game, but um, yeah, if if I, I just would have to briefly share my screen, that's all. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> this is what it it looked like at the beginning. So this mm. is how the whiteboard started. I was a collaborative whiteboard. As I said, there was this you know this dangers to the society on the river in the village, and they were engaged in fishing, and then suddenly the fish were threatened by some. <laughs> plutonium uh, reactor accident up the river and uh, the fish were dying on and uh, prior to that there was some apes that were threatening to uh, yeah it was fascinating honestly it was so brilliant <laughs> that was the whiteboard what's the name of the game Heike um, what's the name of the game um, I could find it out again. Um, I, it escapes me, but it was a game created by an anthropologist that he seems to sell on the market. I'll try and find out the, the name for you if it's commercially available. Or, that would be great because like it's... That, if, yeah, just like it that. Looks like, it looks like exactly the kind of game that we would you know, want to try out actually in that group. Because mm -hmm. um, The Quiet Year is similar. So it's mm -hmm. basically, it's, re it's ideal for, for students, I think. But at the moment, the way the rules work is that it's, um, it's, uh, it's a bit too long. So it takes like, it can take two to four hours to play a game. So I think it would be interesting to look at adapting it basically for language learners. So it only takes like 30 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. 30, 40 minutes, I think is the ideal time for this type of game. Awesome. Well, let's see. I'll, I'll show you what the PSP Minecraft Monday people are doing. Uh, let me see if I can get over here. I see. Uh, I got to share up. Oh, by the way, oh, this is what I was going to pull up for, uh, um, for ne uh, Nina. Yeah. And uh, I'm thinking of doing this myself. You take a book that you've never read and you hold it up, you should hold it upside down in front of a building that you do not intend to enter. Anyway, I'm- Okay, I'm, I'm, and what's the point exactly? What's the point? You don't get the point? He's, he's holding up a book by Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you, okay. It's- uh, Are he like Donald Trump to get his hair cut? No, Donald Trump. Can anyone else tell Nina, or is it just me that understands? 
I think there are two levels to this. Well, it's, it, it, the president is being widely criticized for going, you know, crossing, uh, throwing tear gas on, on peaceful protesters against their... Uh, or their at least having it thrown. Going into... Uh, Going up to a building that he wasn't—he wasn't intending. He had no intention of entering. And oh, oh, oh! Yes, of course. Of course. Holding a book that everyone said he, hes never I read. I loved it. And yes. Anyway, well, then when I post mine, you'll—you'll you'll get the joke. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Well, I, I wanted to show you over here. I just did a blog post on the the, the Minecraft Monday people have been uh, playing around with maps. Lately. So speaking of maps, this is something you can do in Minecraft. Uh, you, they, how you make a map is you get some sure, some cane, sorry, and you make paper and then you get a compass and you put a piece of redstone in the middle and put some iron around it and that makes a map. So once you've got a map, then you can, it will start tracking wherever you go. So when you wander around, you can go places. And when you, um, uh, if you get if you make copies of the map, other people can take the copies and go other places, and eventually you start filling in all these destinations. And uh, you can Ooh, take these maps and put them up on a wall. And there's quite a lot of things you can do with this. So, and and by the way, I don't know if you know that in Discord you can sp uh, stream your screen. And so this is basically what we were doing: was we're learning how to make these maps. You can also hold the map in your offhand, like a shield. You no. Know? And then use your right hand to attack. So you can follow the map, and you can. Uh, last week, last uh, Minecraft Monday, they gave us all a map, and we had to find what turned out to be a wilderness, um, what they call it, wilderness manor, and it's got all these crazy monsters in it. But anyway, we had to find it, which um, it's interesting to do. So there you go. This another is attack on Minecraft mapping and uh, things you can do to engage students if they've all got Minecraft. So meanwhile, Lane has joined us. Maha is on her way. Maru is, is here. And we're having a nice conversation just bouncing off each other. When I saw that um, Facebook joke about Trump, I first thought it was someone being ironic about this disease that happens on Facebook where everybody has to post, you know, their 10 most favorite LPs or their 10 most favorite books or their 10 most favorite travel photos. And or that was my, I laughed at it straight away thinking, you know, someone's really sick of these things and they're, probably, you know, please put up a photograph of a book you've never read in front of a place you've never been. I thought that was funny. <laughs> then I noticed Trump was there, then I thought, ah, Double funny. That is. That is and, and I don't usually follow these. I know Graham does. I don't want to say anything, you know, put anybody down for doing this. But uh, I, I'm i planning to make a photo and help make this go viral. Cause so how, how are you going to page it? Page it? How, what do you mean? Phrase it? Page it. Yeah. I and mean, what, what, is, what is the book and what is the building that you're going to well, do? Or you haven't decided? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. You know, a book. The book is something about Korean culture that a friend of my son wrote, and he gave us all the book. So I'm going to hold that upside down. And the building is one across the street. It's the Penang Swim Club, which is very expensive to join, and I'll never go in that place. So anyway, but you know, it's just making a point. I really love the one that you show the bald guy in front of the hair cuttery. <laughs> yeah, that one is more obvious than, you know, that, was, that one makes its own statement. But the thing <laughs> is, you have to hold the book upside down because Trump. Yeah, he didn't do that. Yeah, Trump had. Well, did, did Trump upside. hold the Bible upside down? Either it was yeah, upside down or maybe inside out because it didn't say Bible. And, on it. It was, and I'm not down really sure that backwards. it was a Bible. Upside, so you'd have to have been behind him to know it was upside down. But in any event, yeah, it certainly was backwards because I've blown up pictures of this. And I don't see Bible in there anywhere. So, I think George yeah. Bush did something similar with a reading book in a class of small children once. He was reading the book upside down. Pet goat. It's a Republican thing. 
Yeah. Vance, I have a quick Zoom question for you. Okay. Is there a way for the host to pin the video, to pin a video for everybody? Or can you only just pin the video for yourself? I mean, I think that you did, I don't know. I, uh, somehow I ended up in uh, speaker view, which I oh, didn't. I I could make the I could make a screenshot of it if you want. I'd be happy to do that. And then I will that saw, uh, meet your need because what well I no I was just thinking you know when you have when you have a group of people uh -huh. and somebody is your main speaker and other people aren't muted and they cough or they say a syllable and the the speaker view is flipping between people and and you'd like to just ah. hold it on your speaker is there yeah. a way the host can do that yes. in a free account you could share oh in a free account well i don't know if i, I don't know actually Heike and i have made some documents which we'd like to tell you about maybe uh not today but maybe we'll set a little story, why not uh, today a time to do it well <laughs> hi maru anyway uh because they're I think we'd like to talk about, I think we, I, I don't know, we ask Heike about it, but I think it would be nice to make it just a, something that we talk about, you know, so, uh, because Heike has created a document and then she shared it with me and I went through and made some small additions. And then I created one where I took a screenshot of all my, uh, um, oh, by the way, if Is that you, the same I, document that starts out about Zoom safety precautions? Yes, yes. And what I did, no, if, if there was something I wanted to pin, I think I would just share a screen like this. And that, that mean now people aren't going in and out. Now the screen has the, is that what you mean by pin something to the? Um, just so that you don't see rotating heads in the large mm -hmm. video. Yeah. Well, that's one way you can get control of a meeting. You can, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna make a screen capture of what I've got up there now. Okay, so I'm gonna stop my share and I can put that, the screen capture will go in the text chat. So there's the screen that I just shared. Did I get it out to everybody? Vance, when, if you think about it later, can you share that, um, Challenge yeah, there it is. It's, it's in the text chat. And I could probably even do it better. So yeah, I, I could probably right click and, or, or download it, get an image. Uh, I could do that later on if you like. Or you know, I could, I'll do it and I'll put it in the, uh, the chat for this because it's now become a topic of this uh, discussion. So it's fair game to put it in the, okay. in the notes, the show notes for this session. Yeah, anyway, I, I made a screenshot of it and I put it in the text chat. So I don't know, Heike, do you want to do that and sometime? I can just, oh. Yeah, I, I, I can just say that I'm, I'm so much more relaxed about this um, Zoom security issue since we figured this out. Um, I ran a two-day virtual roundtable conference and I was absolutely paranoid about this issue in the beginning, thinking that it would basically uh, produce a lot of PR if we did have in this very public event, which was attended by hundreds of people, and it was that we that we would get Zoom bombers, and, and especially because I'm, I'm also a little bit renowned to be the Zoom security person right now, mm -hmm. but it not not voluntarily but anyway i was i was really paranoid i was uh, very very cautious and in the beginning i did everything by the books to make sure we don't get any zoom booming but then eventually uh, this kind of settled really down for me i was even uh, and on on the next day i was so so much more relaxed to um just like two or three settings in zoom in zoom and I was even able to undo the waiting room, yeah? And the waiting room I'm now using more or less for if I run events. And at the end of the event, we would like to uh, maybe continue a little bit of a private chat. 
amongst the organizers or the presenters and what have you. And then we, we don't expel Zoom people because when you expel them or remove them from the meeting, they cannot return. That's one of the security features. Is, yeah. So what we do is we kindly ask them and say, apologies, but we'd like to continue here as is. And those who don't respond, we'll put them in the waiting room. Yeah. So they're not thrown out. They can return and uh, they don't feel too bad, I suppose. Um, but no, truly speaking, uh, Zoom security has been um, not a worry anymore. And the opposite, I feel, so Zoom still is a big, big blessing for mankind. And what has been, uh, well, a couple of personal highlights in the journey of um, also what we, uh, this, this morning's uh, uh, um, I'd like to share something which I I'm very grateful for, but Vance, perhaps if you want to take over at this point and share your document um, or share what you wanted to share. Great minds think alike. I, I was, I'm going to put, first of all, its link in the text chat. And for the last couple of uh, Sunday sessions, I've had the link to both my document and the hypers, thinking that maybe somebody would like to talk about those. But basically, with the one I, I just put, or if you want me to share it, I'll be happy to do that. Shall I just do that? Yes, please. Right? Yes, please, Vance. Okay. So what I what this is is a. Uh, can you see it there? What I've done is I've made screenshots of all my windows, and and actually I put in a table of contents, so you can click on links and you can go to different parts of it. But that's the very first screen when you uh, when you go to your open up your profile and where you see uh, schedule a meeting uh, down to other. That's the basic settings. So I just uh, made screenshots and showed you my setting basically. So, and, and made some annotation. So basically the first one, uh, you don't want your host or participant videos to be allowed at the beginning. And also uh, screen share, which Heike had to ask for. Uh, I, I've, you, at this stage in these settings, you turn off screen share. So you don't allow it to anybody, but it's, it happens to be, uh, let's see if I can find the screen there because I've got this uh, uh, screen share. But to be honest, uh, Vance, you now enable the screen share for everyone because you yes. wanted to give me the rights. That's right, but, but that, I don't mind. That is really, but the, if you did a co-host, it would be better. You know? Oh, yeah. And, and to give it, yes, well, it would be, but because I Because now see, you've opened it up to all. Yeah, yeah, but but I want actually I want people to be able to share. Uh, sure. Okay. I'm so just saying a Zoom bomber can then use this security hole. They can, but you have so many ways to trap them. You know, first of all, you can expel them. You can put them to the waiting room. That's how we dealt with the uh, with Nick Peachy's bombers. I'm, I'm looking for the screen share. Screen share. No, I've got a screen share. Okay, okay, so two of them. Let's see. Because it shows you, I've got a picture of the Zoom security settings. Yes, mm -hmm. here you go. So at the beginning of the meeting, you set it so that screen sharing, host screen sharing is on. And it asks you also if, if you give your host screen share, who, who can share host only? And uh, you can also say all participants can share, but when someone else is sharing, you have to put in that, uh, uh, oh, I've, I've said this for host only when the meeting starts, but then to override that, let's see if I've got this down here. Um, I'm not sure where that graphic is, but basically I, somewhere I've got the, uh, the, settings that you do in Zoom, but it's also something that you can then release. And like Heike says, I release it for everybody because at the moment I'm the same as you are. I've got a closed meeting and I'm not worried about anybody here. We know the people are here. So for a small uh, group of people like this, it's, you know, not a problem. We know it's not a problem, but basically all of these are, um, these are the settings several pages of them but i just took pictures of each one and also another reason i did that was if anybody wants to look through that and can suggest a better way to do things i certainly would like to 
you know, take that on board or add it to the annotations. So my, my desire is to give everyone as much ability as possible. Uh, because normally that's the way we've always worked. Everyone can speak, they can, you know, show a webcam, they can do what they want to do. And if, if, by the way, if you're trying to do something and you're not able to do it, you can tell me because then I can, oh yeah, we'll see what we have to. Okay, I have, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm uh, doing professional development, I usually have a, a, a co-host with me or mm -hmm. I'm the co-host mm -hmm. and we uh, have breakout rooms. We mm -hmm. send the participants to the breakout room. So apparently only one person, the actual host, whoever's designated, can go hopping from room to room. Is that true? One, um, only one, only the host can go from room to room. Is that, am I missing something? The, um, the, participants, the participants can also, if you enable that setting, they can leave the breakout room they're in can go back to the main room and can request to be placed somewhere else. Uh, that's kind of a workaround for them being able to jump from room to room. But uh, so a co-host, you would ask him, co-host, please, can you go to room number one? And then when the co-host is finished in room number one, he comes back to the main room where the main host assigns him another room to go to. So yes, it's a manual process, but then also, uh, the co-host can jump, as it were, or can go from room to room. How does, that's what we did, but I thought it was kind of clunky. Um, it is clunky, yeah. How, how, so how does the co-host say, I'm finished in room one, I'm ready to visit room two? Um, he comes out of the breakout. Oh, just, just come on, on your own out, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay, yeah. okay, so... If if it's enabled, um, you have to, when you start the breakouts in Zoom, you have to check mark that, that they are allowed to leave the breakout. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, on, it's only the host who sees the breakouts on the, on the bar at the bottom, not the right. co-host. Correct. All right, okay, thanks. I appreciate it. And, it seems um, like there are some things you have to set up in settings before you schedule any meetings, and then there are other things that you set up in the, in the meeting that you're scheduling. And sometimes you can undo the things that you did in the settings. It's really quite confusing. Well, um, it is, but you is can about. in Zoom, you can in Zoom also sort of create kind of rooms that um, are designed for specific purposes. Like, um, as I said, uh, the Tallinn informal chat room. Yeah, so Vance could set up a meeting series every Sunday and then in this room settings of that Sunday series he can do all of these settings that would right. allow people to collaborate a lot more then he can also set up some event type yeah. like the ones yeah. where public speakers attract a lot of people and uh, like Nick Peachy's problem was and uh, and then in in that setting be more restrictive so right. you can yeah. meeting templates it's called yeah yeah, I have several. I do that. I have templates for class, templates for advising, templates for meeting with faculty, and their settings are different. Yeah, you can in also Zoom? in Zoom or in Adobe. Zoom. No, I'm talking about Zoom. And okay. you can also, when you make it recurring, there's also a no fixed date, no fixed time recurring exactly. possibility. Yeah. So that's what I use for my virtual office hours. I just have that same setup and anytime I want to meet with a student, I just open that particular room. It doesn't matter when. Mm -hmm. No no fixed date. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And Vance, you were you weren't finished with the the document, no, were you? Well you I, I show? just stopped sharing it. It, um, please, please continue letting us know. Sorry, I had you... a question and we went off. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Uh, Heike has a document too, which kind of answers the question that Nina answered in a more direct way. That is, she actually the the document is linked here up at the top, I believe. Let's see, uh, where did I get this? Must be at the top somewhere. I sure, I thought I would have had a link to that document. 
Uh, maybe it's down at the bottom. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, no, I don't see the link. No, here we go. Oh, well, sorry. Oh, it's beautiful that you went through all the room settings because there yeah. are 80 of them. <laughs> well, I'm systematic. I have to be systematic. So your Very document good. is less systematic, but it gives a better overview. So I don't know, you might want to show it yourself. But, um, no, no go ahead. Now, uh, basically, yeah. I, I don't know. I, also, I've got this, this dinner time thing, which happens in 15 minutes. So I don't want right now to go through this whole thing, but maybe it'd be better if people went through it on their own. But what it does, basically, is it shows you the things that you, that you, these are, all these settings are what you have to, oh, here's your document, Heike. There it is. That's, that's your document right there. I'll just open it in another window, and then we can also show it is that coming up yeah that's there you go this is heiko's document and she oh, she clearly shows what things have to be set up prior to creating the event and then, if, you, if you click on the uh, um on the left hand side on the uh, overview basically the uh, uh no on the very left hand side of the oh the google one. docs yeah, yeah that okay. one oh, okay. exactly it sort of oh, shows okay. um a couple of settings prior and then there are a couple of settings in meeting and then there are some best practice recommendations yes. as well yes uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay so yeah so that's good i hadn't noticed that navigation so once the event has started then you have this is, she shows the security panel here this is mm -hmm. where you see where uh she has share a screen ticked in i've got it set so that you no one can share a screen at the beginning of the meeting because mm -hmm. moon bombers exploit that in order to put up stuff you don't really want to see. Exactly. Yeah. If you do yeah. want to see it, you don't want your friends knowing that you're seeing it. But anyway, okay. So um, you can, but in this in the Zoom settings, you can then allow share screen. So what I've done, uh, I've allowed this for everybody because I'm quite comfortable with anybody sharing a screen at any time. Uh, in the setting I was showing you earlier, where you set up that only the host can. That, that setting shows that the host can take over a share, but no one can take the share from the host. So if you allow any participant to take a share from anyone else, then that means that a bomber can put up the screen, you can try to take it back, they can put it up again. So, but if you take the screen, uh, like I did with when Nina asked me to, I put a picture up and that's it, I've got, I've got control at that point. So nothing's gonna happen on shared screen. And then I could go into settings and I could remove the ability for people to share screens. So if you have a bomber in your midst, there's that way to deal with them. First of all, you can put them in the, in the waiting room if you just wanna get rid of them. Or you can also, uh, if you go in and you set that where Heiko is mentioning that um, they can't rejoin, if you eject them, then they can't get back in. So that was a setting I didn't know about when uh, we had the problem with uh, in Nick Peachy's talk. But I did have the waiting room set up, which was how we managed to quarantine those, those people. So anyway, yeah, these, these are yeah. There the screen share is taken off. And it talks about to prevent griefers from taking over screen sharing. So Heike goes through this in the general, generally what you should do. And I go through it systematically because that's the way my mind works. I have to understand. It Lovely. Entirely. Lovely. And, uh, and also I put it out so that if other people want to have a look and want to give me feedback on how I can do that better, that would be very nice. Um, can, can I just ask one, one thing to the group here? Um, Cause I was a little bit, um, you know, the, uh, there, there's an expression that emerged at the JALT call this morning. It was called ERT. Has anyone heard of ERT um, at the emergency, all? The emergency, um, uh, yeah, I, I actually remote remember. teaching. Remote teaching. Emergency remote teaching. Emergency and I was just wondering whether that's an expression to explain the, because I know, Graham, you, you're talking often about remote teaching as the, have you heard of ERT? Yeah, I, 
Is that a common use, expression now to I describe that? Let me let me um, find the quote. I use a quote from an article that talks yeah, about the. Yeah, I have I have the quote here actually. To be honest, I have it, and it's I've um it was it was a quote by um. It's by Hodges, Moore, Lockie, Trust and Bond. And they said yeah. emergency remote teaching has been defined as a temporary shift of instructional delivery to an alternate delivery mode due to crisis circumstances in which the primary objective is not to recreate a robust educational ecosystem, but rather to provide temporary access to instruction and instructional supports in a manner that is quick to set up and is reliable available reliably available during an emergency or crisis and is that sort of a common expression that we can describe the last couple of weeks in the educational field is i've been i've been looking for an expression to to describe yeah that. i think i think it's it's one of the articles that has been quoted quite a lot now because of the the last couple of months the move towards a kind of instant response and to distinguish that from you know the don't don't sort of confuse that with planned sort of mapped out online learning basically or remote teaching that is more sort of considered so you know how to get how to get started very quickly to start sort of teaching your lessons remotely without you know much much preparation planning or you know careful. yeah and, and so yeah what, it's being used as, as a kind most, of the most common expression as, as a warning more than anything is a kind of you know people say okay what you're doing now is a response to the pandemic but you know when when you get the chance that online learning doesn't work this is something you're doing very quickly and you know it's that really to a kind of word of warning i think it's been and what would be the the most uh, um apt expression for teaching synchronously at a distance um is it remote teaching these uh for me that's the best way of describing it you know it's Remote teaching is being used by a lot of people now to describe the synchronous teaching online, basically. Um, I'm sure there are, you know, you the use- The expression live online, online is not used at all, no? Well, it, it's also used. I like live online as an expression as well because it kind of tells you very easily what it actually is, you know. Because synchronous and asynchronous are two technical terms to use, really. Yeah, that's the problem I have. Yeah. So in yeah, the I think it's, yeah. what they're doing Sorry. at the moment is distinguishing between remote teaching and and asynchronous by calling the asynchronous online work guided online learning. It again, asynchronous is, is online learning. Guided online learning is what, what they've started, what they've adopted to kind of distinguish between the live online remote teaching. I see. And remote teaching doesn't include the asynchronous online learning teaching. No, for, for me, remote teaching is synchronous. We, mm -hmm. we need to okay. term the live online mm -hmm. or remote teaching, basically. Remote teaching for me isn't isn't async okay thank you i think we are i think they are just uh, different words they're used in different regions uh, i think it's some kind of fashion maybe uh, the people of southeast asia use it this way the people in europe and america use it in a different way oops i think am i right I about zoom is crashing for me sorry excuse me excuse me Hello? Can you hear me? I think, I think Graham, yeah, I hear you fine, Maha. I think Graham just said I'm crashing or something, and now it's actually frozen. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, Maha, yes, oh. there are so many expressions around. This is why I would like to try and find out the most common and the most, um, uh, uh, you know, for our times, this kind of remote, yeah, in ERT was the first time I heard today and it describes yes. nicely what happened. But I would also like to sort of come up to, with a, an expression of what from now onwards can be developed because I have been he hearing that uh, a lot of go governments are thinking of now getting money ready uh, to invest in educational systems, especially digital skill sets. And um, so there's big sums of money perhaps coming, being poured into the <laughs> into uh, uh, educational systems for teacher training, for even infrastructure for online websites, resources and everything, because it was a big shock to the public health uh, educational system. And so they're now thinking of getting more prepared. <laughs> and because of the um, investments pending, or this is what I heard, they're pending apparently. And there's been a lot of talk at um, even private investor sector. Um, that's why I would like to come up with an expression <laughs> which they might know and understand to be um, the new the new normal, you know, the coming yes. up new normal, yeah. blended learning, uh, partly online teaching, because the schools open up in Germany, but what happens, and the same as in Japan, I heard, um, the schools can only fill the classrooms to half capacity. That's one problem. So they have to shift them with the timing, morning and afternoons, uh, which the school buses don't even know what to do with it because <laughs> they're kind of in their old schedule. And on top of that, with, uh, in Germany, some 20% or even 30% of all teachers have now signed off sick because they are elderly folks and they're afraid to get the coronavirus from their from their students. And there have been cases uh, around the world with schools being infected and 12 teachers being affected in one school and hundreds of students just got infected in, in just one school. So, I mean, the, it's, it's, still, it's still pending a lot, this digital, uh, yeah, stuff. Yes, I think that even many countries will think a lot about the idea of getting back to the new school year, even in September. I don't believe many schools will get back at that time. I think they will shift it more to October or so. I so think so. It, it could be a blended type of learning now. Or Maybe what do you think? I mean, I'm asking you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think? Maybe what the, the schedule it? of the school can be some kind of day in, day out, or maybe three days a week or something of the sort, and the rest are going to be online. I think something of the sort can take place because I think it's not yet completely safe to get to schools. I think it's, uh, although we are still in the hot season or the summer, as we say, but uh, again, uh, we expected that Corona is going to get away with the hot weather, but it seems that it doesn't want to leave. She, uh, the corona likes the, our visit. <laughs> I don't know why. Lane, you don't look well. What's, uh, what's wrong? Well, I'm just thinking about school and what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's sad. Yeah, I work, I'm in teacher education, so I, my students are supposed to be doing student teaching in the schools. They can't do it. They can't graduate because they can't get certified as ESL teachers. So it's a problem for us. Yeah. It's a problem. <laughs> and we say, can we count teaching online as their student teaching? But the state doesn't, our state doesn't want to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. so well, it's holding everybody change. up. That's one of the emergency uh, changes. So the, the, one of the changes people are going to have to make with the yeah the reality that's going on is you just have to bend. You have to <laughs> you have to be a reed, not an oak. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's very confusing, and not to mention yeah. all the people who are losing their jobs over this. And, yeah. It's going to take some time until uh, things are going to settle. I, I don't think this is going to happen before September. Uh, 
think uh, Penang, where I, I live. Things are going to no, I don't mean to be uh, negative, but I, I let's have some hope that's going to happen before that time. I'm sorry. Yeah, say, yeah. Some, say something positive now, Maha. Say I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm, um, trying to. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I... I like, um, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, something positive to a teacher who locally here she had a little she had always afternoon children children in the afternoon to teach English to them through game and play and it was lovely the way she did it and then of suddenly she wasn't allowed to do it anymore and uh, I encouraged her to go online and say look there's so many parents thankful for English lessons online uh, at least the odd hour that they teach this the, the kids right. get some lessons, you know, as because a lot of schools didn't do remote teaching in Germany. So um, there's a big... <laughs> Hi, Graham, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> You're still stuck in one a corner for us. It might not be Graham. You know, we had two Nick Peachy in the chat when he was there. Nick said, there's another Nick Peachy over there. and uh, There he goes again. That one it's on. true. That was the Zoom bomber, right? The, yeah, the second week. So I don't know. Is, let's be careful about <laughs> these people. We're letting into our chat. <laughs> so, Graham, this is <laughs> your <yeah>, imposter. <laughs> Hi, Claire. Yeah. I, I don't know if you should wear that around children. Halima. Halima, <laughs> hi. I see here teachers I never seen in person. And I've uh, carried out Heike, uh, you know uh, that my colleagues know about you in Green, Samarkand, and everywhere uh, that is Heike said, yes, Heike said. And uh, when Steven is a very well known person here in Uzbekistan, all people know them. And I am very happy to be in the community. And nowadays it uh, became a very strong habit to be four, three times in a virtual room, like in Zoom room, for example. Today I make a screenshot with Heike, would demonstrate to my people who know Heike personally, it says that I was in them still. I was late because I tried to find parole. And uh, so easy task for relief 11, 12, 13, next time I will shorten my time being entering here. Uzbekistan is the corner of the world the online education is uh, going on. Hi, I will demonstrate skill, screenshot with you, but I would not like to caption my, with my words. If you write the chat room, your ideas about this remote like this in Germany, I will demonstrate for some universities. They have um, uh, grants and are working in close relations with German other universities. Uh, it will be like I never seen you, by your words are heard, all people see you, and hype is in action, when Steven is in action, is very in, even the community of people uh, meeting each other one time in a week. This is a wonderful. Well, uh, you're right, you're right, Halima, we learn from each other, and this is so wonderful. And this is, uh, I think Vance is, uh, I, I can smell his dinner already. <laughs> He's looking at the kitchen with big eyes. <laughs> no, Bobby's, I think Bobby's trying to get my attention, actually. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you plan to prepare uh, this? He was a success. For, um, Chiso? Sorry, you, I didn't get that, Hadima. Your Chiso next year, uh, last year was very good. Uh, like uh, this uh, uh, knock in the door, open this lock. Like this. Oh, look at that. Look, 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 look. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, ready. Oh, no. Hello, we have yeah. to go, I'm afraid. Dinner's oh, wow. ready. <laughs> yeah. It's still hot. It's still hot. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Um, can, I just, can I just say one last word uh, to whom I'm also very, very grateful for, for the knowledge we're sharing here is Lane. Lane, who's uh, giving me absolutely the... Uh, um, the the the, op the door opener to understanding how to run online workshops, and I'm so grateful to what you've done and the session we did at the virtual roundtable. Right. And and I'm now offering some some training to some uh, some teacher training, and trying to sort of 
come up with a similar model, pre-tasks, yeah. you know? <laughs> right. Thank you so right. much for that. Well, um, thank you for course. pushing me. You, you made me actually do it instead of talking about it. You made me do it. <laughs> It was wonderful. I learned so much from that. Thank you so much. Well, this and, is, uh, I'd like actually yeah. to say to Lena, I've introduced your Sofla to the British Council online oh. teaching people. So we'll see wow. if that's taken up as well. I'll let you know. Wow, okay, because um, I keep developing it and, uh, you know, it's not a static <laughs> model. So, you know, I have eight steps, but I also show it as a cycle, a circle now. So make sure with, great. You, you get in touch with me about the latest version. And Fantastic. I'm also working no, on, love also to, working love on to an hear. article. Huh? And I'd love to also feedback some of yes. the experience that I have in applying your software model and okay. the, what, I, what, what I learned through that. Thank okay, yes. great, great. We <laughs> awesome. can have a little a little circle, a little conversation about it. Okay, would be really and now good. we have to let Vance go. Yeah, mm. he's hungry. And we, thank we, you we so have much. have so many things for future uh, events. So um, actually, I, it's kind of nice that we're kind of running short of events because this has been really busy for me this last few weeks. And I'm looking forward to you know doing a few things that I need to do uh, on the side. But I think this week there's nothing really planned until the next WebHeads meeting, although something could be planned. But And I, I would love to, to have uh, this meeting and then a midweek meeting. Uh, that would be really perfect for me. And, so, and, and Vance, if you miss somebody, just send me an email. I'll meet you online. <laughs> well, I'll meet you remotely. <laughs> well, I, I, just made it, I just made a date with Nina for the middle of the week because we want to oh, talk. Really? So, yeah, sure. There you go. Wonderful. Well, these, these involve, you know, I like to blog these things, so that does take a little time. So, uh, anyway. But this is, we just talked about how we're learning from each other. And this is Learning yes. Together episode 471. And this is the 25th Talon experiment that we've put on, the 25th Talon webinar, and our 11th WebHeads revival meeting. Uh, 7th of June, got the month right, Graham? Uh, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and I really appreciate everybody coming. Yeah, thank you very much. And. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to seeing how you'll dress next week. If we keep this going into October, Halloween is going to be a big part. <laughs> and enjoy <laughs> dinner, Vance. <laughs> yeah, have fun, everybody. Okay, nice to see everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think our right. Facebook stream kind of stopped anyway. I'm not really sure. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for bye coming. bye. And uh, stop the recording here too. I'm, then, I will be doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got my eye on it. Stream and the recording. Okay. I might as well stop the stream first because it seems to have died. No, never mind. I'll stop the recording. Okay. Oh, I always go to the wrong place to stop the stream. So, um, okay. Bye-bye, everybody.